So guys, unfortunately, this is our last day. Actually, in fact, we are leaving in an hour. So we are packing up the car again. Look how low the car is here because we are parking on this little slope here. I can easily bump my head in the... <laughs> so I have... Um, I took some notes in regards to the charging situation here and how much kilowatt hours we have used. So, so far it was uh, 35 kilowatt hours all in total. And I just did another test drive with um, Catherine, showed her the plug-in hybrid. She was very impressed and wanted to do some research now on electric vehicles, which is always good. And recharging the car now, we've got uh, still an hour, an hour time until we leave. So recharging the car as much as possible, of course, get the best efficiency then we will use as i said yesterday we will use the yeah we will use the safe mode to go home and see if we get a better fuel economy because 7.1 liters per 100 kilometers is just not good enough but it might be caused by the low state of health of the battery as well it's uh, almost 30 percent down so we will see So this is the last hour of this breathtaking view and you can see the ocean in the background as well. Have a look at this dent here. Not sure if you can see that. There's also a crack here. This whole area, like probably big as my hand, was totally pushed in. If, if something has hit the car, I am 100% sure I didn't hit a kangaroo or anything else, or a pedestrian or something, nothing like this. But this one was totally pushed in. And I put my thumb on top of it here and it came out, but it's all bended. You can still see the dent here and there are some scratches here. And this one is totally cracked down here. So um, I have to go to the panel shop after Christmas and get a quote, get this fixed. Um, the insurance will cover most of the costs hopefully for that. Yeah, I'm sure they will. But I still have to pay about $600 myself. But I don't want to leave it like this, even if it's not really visible if you don't know it. But no, I, I know it's there and this can't, can't stay like this, absolutely not absolutely not and i have no idea how this stand it looks like a, a branch or something fell on the car but no idea the only thing we can actually think of is when we um, have been in brisbane for the graduation of my son we parked the car further away in a non-parking zone area and this was a little bit of a, a dodgy area there the houses were only really yeah not in best shape and order i would say and probably this is just pure vandalism that someone kicked into the car or something that's the only excellent explanation we can imagine because at home it parks in the carport and there's no possibility that something that heavy falls on the car and there's no other scratches here i mean if you hit something there would be a scratch over here somewhere or here at the bumper there's nothing there's no further damage apart from this one hit here so not sure very annoying super annoying super expensive but it needs to be fixed it is uh, 45 kilowatt hours actually we have used in the last five days here not 35 it's 45 quick maths so we are almost packed up and the car is still charging we've got another 10 minutes or so until we need to leave um, 620 watts we have so car is almost fully charged I think I'll um, unplug now get the cable organized in the car put everything back in the car and then we are off for a 550 kilometer trip <sighs> see you later fancy unit in Agnes water you had a great time Oh, is this all yours? Yes. Don't forget. Yeah.
That's the bye bye video. <laughs> <laughs> okay, see, see you guys, see you later. <laughs> see you later, guys. Thank you very much. Bye bye. <laughs> so I um, I offered to pay for the power, but they said no. That's good. Okay, thanks. <laughs> We've just uh, decided to have our lunch here actually at the lake. So what I've seen so far in safe mode is with all these up and down sections we have here on this road, on the highway actually, it looks like the car is using uh, battery power as well to get up the hill to keep the 100 kilometers per hour I've set with the cruise control and it sucks up a lot of energy from the battery of course and then going downhill on the other side recharges and regens of course a little bit but not as much as we would need or as we needed to get up the hill of course so and then driving on the flat recharges with about 6.6 .6 kilowatt what I've observed so far so this is twice as much as the car charges itself um, from AC and it takes quite a long time to um, replenish these kilometers you've lost going up this hill and then when you are there and the next hill comes and you're doing the same again and that's why the battery um, the state of charge is not increasing it takes a long 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 time to get one or two kilometers on the gasometer actually and you can see the increase of state of charge so and I think this is mostly due to the um, really hilly and mountains we have here to the hilly drive to the hilly roads here with up and down all the time it sucks up your battery um, faster than it can recharge when you go downhill again I tell you what Kath and Derek we are already missing our unit we are only 120 kilometers off but we are already missing the unit, the views, the comfort, the quietness. What an amazing experience with you guys. Thank you so much again. So guys, and um, now I'm charging here at the electric highway chargers in Childers. These um, chargers have been set up by the Queensland government. Yeah, we've got fast chargers CCS2 and Chademo and this is level 2 chargers 32 amps. And I've got the EVSE hooked up to the Tesla adapter directly plugged in. Um, had this one on yellow, waited 15 seconds, put it up to black and now it seems to work. 3.4 kilowatts at the moment. I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not staying here for three or four hours now until the car is fully charged. This is just proof of concept that this adapter works actually on level two chargers. I had actually the adapter on plug before when I plugged it in and it charged for about one and a half minutes and then it stopped charging. Because this is a three phase supply and you have to start on the yellow setting and then uh, flip, flick it over to the black one and now it's stable on 3.4 kilowatts 14.2 amps the 14.2 amps seem to be the maximum we can get out of the EVSE that's the setting it's not 15 amp it's only 14.2 I've never seen it um, higher than this okay so proof of concept we can charge at a level 2 charging station with a Tesla adapter that is fantastic and gives us even more even even more charging possibilities now okay let's um, turn off this whole situation here and continue our journey there we go it's off
topping up the tank a little bit. Twenty-five dollars, twenty liters. That's all you get. We have just ordered Chinese takeaway. Waiting for the food to be ready and having a look at the Christmas tree here in Woodford on our way home. Huh? Isn't that nice? So guys, finally back home, finally back home. What a drive. The mobile phone has switched off itself a couple of times because the charger could not supply enough energy to the mobile phone. And we have to rely on the MS, MMC SE in the car. 7.4 liters on the way back to 7.1 on the way there. And the dog shows us 7.3 liters per 100 kilometers on average from Agnes Water in Queensland back home. That was a whole trip of 610 kilometers. Uh, got 2.4 leaves out of 5, sportive, yeah sure. And you can see the elevation 5.5 kilometers up and 5.4 kilometers down. So we didn't, we didn't drive the exact same route as we um, did last week when we get got there. Overall it seems like the charge mode is a little bit more efficient but I I will do a full comprehensive okay guys we have to say hello to the dogs now they are yeah they are they are going nuts outside of course after only five nights <laughs> yeah thanks for coming with us again thanks for watching this is Andy from Unplugged TV Australia signing off you stay charged and we will see us of course in the next video which is coming yeah guys so far this yeah i'm i'm not sure if safe mode or charge mode is more efficient it looks like they are very much the same i, I do a full comprehensive review about these two modes of course and we'll let you know how to drive the phev on longer distances it will be totally useless because this is only for this trip and if you drive on a different route it will be totally different if you drive in a different area it will be super absolutely totally different if you live in a mountain area it will be different if you live in a flat area it, it is hard to tell it is not a big difference between these two modes so probably it doesn't make any sense to use charge mode at all unless you want to recharge your battery and use the energy later when you come in town yeah interesting to see uh, we've got 30 percent state of charge and 8.1 ampere hours this is 30 percent now because i have lost another zero point was it 0 0.5 this morning yes it was 0 0.5 from 27.5 to 27 that was today which is total bullshit again that happened uh, when I turned on the car this morning um, before we left Agnes water I got half an ampere hour lost so I lost 0 0.1 on the way there and 0 0.5 on the way back super totally stupid okay guys anyway um, thanks for watching Thanks for your support. This is Andy for Unplugged TV Australia signing off. You stay charged and we will see us in the next video. Okay, guys. See you then. Bye-bye. Oh, what a trip. And to tell you as well, at 30% state of charge, I've got 3.82 volts as the minimum voltage.